What is up my Simi Tubins? How are you all doing? And welcome back to From the Depths where it has been two weeks, nearly two weeks since I've uploaded last, but that is because I have been absolutely utterly busy like an like a like a busy bee. <laughs> we have this this we have it it's it's it is ours and we are going to do a lot of stuff with it this is going to be our flagship unfortunately <laughs> our flagship is a little bit expensive so we can't spawn it in just yet and we do have a massive gaping hole on this side and on the other side as well which i will tell you about in a mo so this is our flagship this i will have a link in the box in the down there telling us you know telling you guys where i found the image and so on and so forth because this I was, you know, going off a 3D model, um, you know, an image pretty much, and um, just trying to trying to make it, you know, in game really, and uh, it it fit what I needed perfectly because there was there was a comment in one of my uploads saying, hey, can you make a um, make a, you know, a uh, an airship, a big airship, and I was like, yes, we definitely do need one for sure. So, uh, this fit the bill perfectly because of this whole long front section, which is what, what is holding uh, half of our pack, really. Half of our pack is taking up this space. We could have gone bigger, probably. Might do it. We shall see. So, this is our pack system. It is uh, needs to be covered on the left and on the right side, so I need to trim down these two uh, deadly blades, but I thought, you know, I'll leave that for now, just to show you good people what sort of things that, you know, how, how it is and so on and so forth. So it's pretty much, you know, S's, S bendings, you know, to the left, to the right, to the up and to the down. Um, it's, it's going back into the pack head itself. So we have one on one side and we have one on the other side. Both doubling back into the head. Um, boom, boom, boom. This is the sort of setting we are going with like us so I am using piercing it was to me it was having a better effect with such a small charge time and the reason why I done such a small charge time you know rather than rather than max out the whole overclocking thing and just wasting your battery all in one massive hit but to be honest the, the whole massive hit it wasn't really that massive even with impact, it wasn't like a massive crater, like, you know, going all the way through, which, you know, I would have expected. So, I thought, well, why don't we just try to make it kind of like a continuous beam and go really close range to our target. A random cut there while I had a co coughing fit. The man flu is, is getting better. It is going away, finally. Stupid thing. So, we're using this as a close range weapon. Um, so we obviously need this to be a point at and it has to lower its nose down towards the target if it's, you know, a surface, surface vessel. So we have two, two of these packs here, both working the exact same way. Like I said, impact and I tried it all the way to, to full, I also tried, you know, uh, piercing with the overclock to full on the charge time, really cranked things up. I, it wasn't, it wasn't too impressive. But like this, with such a small, small charge time, it is close, close to a continuous thing, just, you know, eating away at the enemy, pretty much. And it's more of, to me, it's more of a fun thing rather than, you know, pure damage, but it still does the job. I mean, that's if the cannons over there leave the damn thing alive by the time we get to it. So, talking about those, uh, well, we'll get to them in a minute. This is our lambs for our front left front right which is you know right to the left right of our packs this is what we're using for our lambs pretty simple might expand on it don't know we shall see but obviously I will wait and see what you guys will suggest that's the sort of settings we, we are going you know the the stats we are using an output regulator as well so that's to the left to the right, each have three nodes each. Over here... <laughs> over here we have our ammo, which is probably in the most stupidest place ever. I need to lower it down at least uh, two blocks. And probably split it up. 
Not too sure. I mean, we could definitely have. No, I don't want to have anything next to the packs. But we, yeah, this has to move. The, the whole ammo needs to move. We also have a couple of custom jets to help us with steering. Loads of daily blades to help us with steering and to keep us up in the air. Even these guys are to help us with steering. So down here we have one of our shells. This is our... I was actually trying to aim for a two layer pen depth. With this, but I think we definitely have to increase our rail draw. Especially when I'm using a percentage for it just for the aim. So I have to increase this a little bit more. I'm going to show you that in a mo. It's for a four, 411 gauge. So that's the sort of, you know, uh, uh, stats that we have with this one. That is going to these cannons over here, these APSs. Come on, go faster. So that shell is being used with these. If you want to see what is going on here. Originally I was aiming for, you know, 30 per minute, but obviously we can't. Well, obviously we can't really sustain that sort of power. So currently we are taking, we are firing one of those shells. Well, actually it's going to be more than one of those shells because we have one on this. We have two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. If we can have all all of both all four of these on the same target at the same time, we have eight being fired um, at every three seconds. That's you know the power that we are using, and fifteen percent of that we're using it just for aim. Uh, these, in my opinion, this whole setup, the whole shape of the, the, the turret heads, which I will give you, put a little screenshot on the, on the, on the thingy in a mo. In my opinion, they would have gone much, much better with a couple of crams, but I am really bad with crams. We have a bit of detection on this one. We've got a visual cam and a coincidence range finder. The other ones, they have a couple of uh, bits and bobs. Couldn't put a rangefinder on it because it would have looked a bit silly, but anyway, on these ones. So we have an IR camera, activator gimbal, and another visual camera on these. And this is the shell that we are going with for these uh, turrets over here. These are on a 400, uh, the, no, these are on a 200. And I believe they are using, so they're using 9,000 9, energy, and that's like every 2.6 seconds we are firing a shell. So that's, what was it, 9,000? Something like that. So, you know, the, the reason why I was using rail draw with these guys is to increase our muzzle velocity, because it was well under the 400 mark, as you can see, that was the, the muzzle velocity with this shell 126 which is very 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 bad and you know anything under 400 in my opinion is slow for an APS and I really wouldn't go with it under 400 so that is that um, this is the shell we I am trying out the grave compensator don't know if I'll be keeping it or not might put in a visible trace I might put in a warhead or a frag or whatever something else I don't know but I'm trying this out um, so that's the shell that so hopefully you know I am I am actually waiting for your comments and suggestions as to shell types and all of that good stuff all of that good stuff hopefully you guys will leave me some ideas uh, we do have a couple of torpedoes the same on the other side as well this this whole construct is very very ammo hungry so I didn't set these up as air to air. Pretty much these are just for um, surface. I might even might even tweak these just to be for submarines only. Because you know, it is very ammo hungry. These guys are to be anti airs only. That is what we're sort of going with. There is one thing that I wanted to do with this, and I want your feedback. So what I wanted to do was, um, is to have these pop in and pop out if there is an enemy. The only problem is, as you can see, it is going to be glitching through the blocks. That's like that. And we also have a, a horrible corner sticking out here. So, you know, that might need to be sorted out a bit. 
Now, I don't know what you, what you think, this is why I want your comments and suggestions as to should we have it come pop up and pop out, but it's going to be glitching through the blocks. If glitching through the box is a very big no-no, then we shall just leave it out. What the hell was it at? Four point something? Something like that. So yeah, if that's a very big no-no, then we'll just have to leave it out, or I will trim it up and see if I can stuff it down throughout that hole. Um, over here, like I said, we do have these gaping big holes. Uh, these gaping big holes, uh, they have these spherical things, and I don't know what I'm going to be using them for just yet. So hopefully, you know, I can get your feedback on that. I have a couple of laser bits and bobs, you know, for the anti-air. This whole thing is being pushed with um, dead blades. We do have space to put in more thrusters if we want. So those are those. Uh, we have a whole line of thrusters to, to turn our backside. Uh, this whole construct still does not have a double layer of um, armor just yet. So I'm trying to keep the price down so we, at least we can get it in to the campaign very soon. This one is just for our anti-air. Um, we have a couple of bits and pieces. Looking after our battery, turning the pack uh, AI on or off, depending, you know, on our charge. But so far, you know, it hasn't taken us down under 30% because I have our rail guns. Our rail guns can only work if there is uh, more than 50% of battery power. So if all of our rail guns are firing at the same time, it's fine, I think. And then once we get close to the target uh, and our pack starts going, then our rail guns are going to turn off. And as soon as our pack stops firing, our rail guns start off again. So we do have the recharge rate on this. Um, over here we have our Bready Bowed. Now our Bready Bowed over here, I was having issues getting this construct to turn to the target. So if we were close to the target and the angle between us and the target is it's too big, it's, it's quite, a, quite a range on the angle. We were ending up circling the target with a point to maintain distance of about 175 meters because this is, is 175 meters because I want to use that pack on that target so we have to be close to it so I don't have to decrease the damage to increase the accuracy I want m as much damage as possible. So in order to do that we had to check the bearing of our target so if it's, you know, under negative 60 or if it's above um, 60, that tells us a true or false. Sends it out of here. So if it's, uh, if A is true, so if A is greater than 0, I mean, we could have just put A if A equals 1. Then use the point to, main, point to maintain distance, which is, I've got it listed as 700 here, but I think it's a little bit more in the settings that I've chosen. And if it's less than, then that means that we can actually turn turn towards our target without, you know, circling it. So the angle the angle is small for us and we can actually point at it. And if so, then use the point of maintain distance. The reason that I've chosen two is because once the angle is too big and you have like a point of maintain distance of, for example, eight or nine hundred and you are under the eight or nine hundred, then it's going to reverse until it gets to that eight or nine hundred. It's going to obviously keep on trying to fix its yaw, so it's going to be pointing at the target whilst it's reversing. And so obviously that angle, that bearing is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning that your nose is pretty much pointing towards the target. And when it's, you know, small enough within the 60s, then it's going to flip over to the point of maintain distance of 175 meters. So it's going to start to go forwards and it's going to pretty much be in range for our pack. Providing our PIDs is set up properly so that the whole construct actually stops at without skipping our target. Even our pitch. Our pitch, I have to find, I have to tune this pitch up a little bit more to keep the nose pointing down on our target and not skipping our target. The roll is fine. Strafe, I'm not even using strafe with this. Hover, we're not doing it in here, we're doing it within the breadboard. And your, well, uh, that's our your pretty much. Very strict, very, very strict on its turn. You know, I want it pretty much 
not not overturning, not under not understeering. I just want to head on towards that target. So this is why I went with these settings. Like I said, uh, the breadboard is looking after our hover. We always want to try to be to try to be 150 meters above our target. Uh, for some reason, it's marking. Yeah, currently we're at 125 meters. Um, you know, above above the sea. And we don't have any target, so it's trying to get us to 150, but obviously it can't. Because right now we are in build mode and we have froze the vehicle in the skies. This is absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm not going to show you that. Um, the AI, like I said, we have a distance of 175. We're using the look at, so it's going to give us the point up, point down as well. If we're using the 700, which we can't even, you know, we can't even activate because we have this set up in our breadboard. But we are using a distance of 300 and. Uh, still gonna have be having the whole look up look down I might change this to keep it level we'll see how it goes in case it starts reversing and it puts its ass in the water that is that that is what I have been doing for a whole bloody week trying to get this thing to do what I want it to do and obviously you know we have a lot of cleaning up to do a lot of bits and bobs that shell has to go this shell over here has to go somewhere else this is definitely not going to be where we are sitting these this chair has to move we shall be probably sitting somewhere in here so probably try to i don't know perhaps we can change this to glass over here but still we can't see out the front because we have a massive turret there so yeah, there are some bits and bobs to sort out, to think about, to try to make it, you know, look and work good. Down here needs another Sam. Over here. Over here, I was actually thinking of making this slides either the slide either left or right, and have a couple of vertical torpedoes facing down. Um, but like I said, this thing is already ammo, ammo hungry. So that is that. Looking forward for your comments and your suggestions on this. And hopefully we can try to get it in. Uh, I don't know if we can get it in today. But if I can manage to board stuff. If boarding is still a thing. And I can farm a lot of stuff off camera. Um, I shall try to bring it in the game. Even with these gaping holes. I'll just have to patch them up. Until you guys tell me what we should do with them. And obviously, we still need shields, we still need to double up on the armor in a couple of sections. So, that is that on this. So, I hope you do like this. I hope you cannot wait to see this thing in action. If you cannot wait to see this thing in action, smash that like and subscribe button. Like it owes you money and tell me in the box in the down there that you cannot wait to see this thing in action. I am very tempted to show you, but I'm going to leave you like that. <laughs> Okay, so before the very the very big changes that we had, uh, you know, with the updates and so on and so forth, I was actually working on a boaty. This is that boaty. The only thing that we are going to be salvaging from this boaty is the body, the missile stuff. I don't think this is going to be quite good. So I have to redo that, probably redo the way these lamb nodes are set up. Um, and I might actually widen this by two, so I'm going to have to cut it down the middle and try to make it a little bit wider. I am not sure yet. We shall have to see. So we also have this in the works. I am working on it. I mean, I have another one. This is this is I have another one that I'm working on, which is you know pretty much chopped up in pieces. But this was actually working properly before a number of the recent big updates um, over here we have like a, a was supposed to be something like a mortar it did sort of work back then now it should work a little bit better if we you know tune it up a bit a load a load of lambs this used to take on a bull 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 work a bill work with no no issues at all looking after his um, his crams except you know obviously this thing is is also expensive very inefficient because at the time I was oh god at the time 
Um, that's the turret. <laughs> yeah, at the time, I was absolutely dumb, stupid, and could not fathom a decent engine, so I kind of filled that up with these. So all of these have to go, and I have to cook up a decent engine. This was for our lambs. Very, very bad. Very, very bad. <laughs> now it's very, very bad. Back then it used to work pretty good, though. Uh, we got a couple of these leafies, I call them, or branches. A couple of these, you know, linked up together. But, yeah. Absolutely bad. Absolutely horrendous. And all of that stuff and things. The uh, This is uh, some of the shells that we are using on the turret at the back there. The disruptors, I believe, frags and HEs and all that good stuff. It's totally not finished over here. As you see, we have a massive gaping hole which needs to be filled up. But that is this one. So also, I do have this which is being worked on. You know, pretty much everything is stripped, stripped out of it and all that. So that is this one as well that I have also been working on behind the scenes. So I hope you can't wait to see this one. And as always, you know, I would still like your comments, thoughts and suggestions about this. Uh, this top butt part here, to me, it looks very, very bad. So this has to be trimmed down. That's for sure. Can't stand that massive hump there. But yeah, that one is that one. Uh, how big is this thing? It's 112. Alrighty then, so back in the campaign. Uh, this is what we left with last time. Remember, I did not save when I done that stupid thing. Damn it, forgot to save. But anyway, we're going to leave that one for now. I'll either do that off camera or we will celebrate spawning in our new flagship with that one. Uh, this is the current look of the map. I know there's a thingy over here which you should probably go and get. I don't know how much of or how many of these fights I am going to be uh, recording because you know trying to keep the time down and we want to spawn. Hopefully, I hopefully I can farm the the, the stuff up to to spawn in our flagship. I don't know yet. So, well, let's just get on with it then. Okay, so our first encounter is a shrike for today. And uh, it's dead. <laughs> Fine. Alright, well, next please. Okay, so what I have done is I have split up our forces. I have our flyers over here. I am currently going towards a Kraken. Over here we have a, a Conga. Yeah, over here we have a Conga, a Hopite, and a Wanda. But I think I want to get rid of this guy first. So I have upgraded our little sub just a little bit more. I have closed our pack in uh, with some heavy armor, closed up our main frame, added some width towards the inner parts of the sides of our, our front, and some metal just under the deck of our front. I think I might start to add some shields. I'm not too sure just yet. Over here we have the Kraken, who has lost some bits and pieces. <laughs> it's losing some bits and bobs. Looks like we do have a couple of things coming our way, and again, I have forgot to add anti-torpedo stuff because I am... <laughs> because I have an absolute brain of a bloody goldfish. Well, what can you do? But looks like we're okay. I don't think this Kraken can do much to us, to be honest. Here comes one of our Torps. Our Torpy Dwarps, which... Uh, yeah, I believe that was a hit. We have a Dolphin over there. Another Dolphin. We have a lot of Dolphins, that's for sure. But yeah, that's the crack and done and dusted out the way, hopefully, because I didn't want to bring in our little flyers, because I know our little flyers would be torn up very, very quickly with that Kraken. So we do have a couple of shells getting very close to us, whilst we are getting very close to a mountain. <laughs> like, it really likes getting close to mountains. 
but we seem to be doing fine. Uh, we got a couple of couple of hits, couple of couple of dings here and there, but it seems that we are okay. Very good. So I don't know uh, how many fights I'm going to actually record. You know, if they're going to be dull, then I'm just going to skip them. What was that? It? Nope. You did. So yes, as the body parts come down all over us, <laughs> that is one crack and out the way. Please do not go head on into a mountain. Thank you. Do not spoil it. <laughs> Excellent. Alrighty, so now we're going to have to take on this Congo, which is going to be an absolute pain on the backside, the Wanda and a Hoppy. It's going to be an absolute pain on the backside because, as I said, I think I should actually scrub the whole idea of trying to get to the surface to use our missiles. But we shall see. We shall see. Let's get these guys something like that. Hopefully we can bring everything in. I don't think so. Where are we? Okay, so we got our two flyers. Our two flyers are in. We are under the sea. Very good. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to tell our... Moving out. There we go. Just move our little guys back for now. Looks like they have been dinged a little bit here and there already. Or at least this poor dude over here has. So, you know, hopefully, you know, our submarine can get a couple of hits in just to hopefully soften them up a little bit. So you have to play it a little bit smart. Because I am feeling a little bit threatened. <laughs> a little bit threatened right now. There was another thought that I had with the submarine, like, um, if we are at a certain range away, a certain distance away, to actually use the proper full depth, even though it's a flyer. I think. I'm not too sure, to be honest. And I still have to set up the missiles uh, maximum range, because I think we're, firing, we're shooting missiles for nothing right now. Okay, let's have a look at things. You guys are like that. We should probably Taking control. just set them up. Taking control. So are we doing? We seem to be doing fine, even though we're just at minus twenty-three. Like you know, like I said, that is it's not a nice position to be in when you're versus air targets like these. But uh, playing it like we've done. We've started to down the Congo, which was, you know, the one that was really upsetting me the most. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Very good! So it looks like we've got all these these numpties are all sorted out. It looks like uh, we're still targeting the Congo as we have, you know, gone deeper, which is also nice to see. Making use of our simple weapons there. Very nice. Except it's all dark and we can't see anything. Nothing. We do have some EMP on our uh, little flyers. We have a mix of missiles. We have uh, the outer two pods are on frags. One of the inner ones is on explosive, and the other other inner one is on EMPs. But once we start hitting the uh, no ammo and uh, just depending on the passive regen, I believe we end up just using frags. I'm not sure. I can't remember if I've set it up. No, actually, no. We, we I set it up so that it will only fire once everything is full. So we'll still be using the whole mix. Very nice. Where are we? 
some little puff of fire underneath the under the waves. Well, looks like everything has been handled. We didn't get damaged that badly. I was actually expecting. Uh, <laughs> I was actually expecting far worse. <laughs> to be honest, I was like, "Oh crap! It's a Congo already!" Like, no, please. Excellent. So that's that out the way. It does. It does feel really bad from my end recording this, as I don't have any new vehicles, you know, to to bring in. So I honestly just don't want things to get boring. You guys, you know, saw these three units on the other, the previous upload, and then you're just seeing the same three again. So you know, to me that oh crap, to me that um, there we go, a bit of dodging there. You know, it does feel a little bit bad. You're supposed to be dodging. Mind you, he doesn't have any protection underneath him, so... <laughs> is that bloody simple laser shooting through? Oh, God, that thing is shooting through us. Waltz is... Oh, well. Yeah. It's a good job they're not that strong, those missiles. What is our submariners doing? Where is it, anyway? What are you? Oh God! Oh, please don't do it! <laughs> don't do it! God, that was close, my friend. Very close. Very good. Looks like we're still getting there. Though. Our little flyers seem to be doing all the work on this one. Well, and you do have a couple of torpedoes coming in. Things are exploding, causing all sorts of stutterings. That is something, I've noticed that, you know, after a while, um, playing from the depths, everything just starts to grind to a halt. <laughs> but, I don't know. As you can see, it's a slideshow right now. And we shouldn't be having a slideshow. What is our submarine doing? I see something poking out of the, s the waves. Please tell me you haven't done anything stupid. Alright. Okay. Very good. Very good. A bit of stutteringness. What I'm going to do is I am going to uh, close the game down and be a bees. Okay, so we are up against a little base over here. Oh crap. Things are getting stuck. Stuck, stuck, stuck. And we have some crammies going over to our little flyers. Nice little base. I like these little bases. So the things are looking like this over here. Please do not hit them. <laughs> Why did you dodge, for God's sake? Like, seriously. So it looks like we're treating this one as an air target because he is a little bit high up in the water. Well, over the water. The hell is AI dead already? You are. You are like, seriously, man. Okay. Well, if you want to read that, read it. Pause it. Read it. Well, that was quick. All right. <laughs> All right then. Okay. So this just blew my mind. We there was nothing here, and and after a second or two, these this, this just popped up in front of my face. We got all these these horrible, nasty, nasty things. We got a couple of gothers uh, and a couple of squirrels. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that is going to be very, very bad. Okay, so here goes uh, nothing. Looks like we're on our own. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm hearing it, but I'm not seeing it. So listen, the flying squirrels have gone right above us. Uh, looks like we've gotten rid of one. Or close to getting rid of one. And it looks like we're eating every mine that exists. Our flyers have charged on ahead. Because they're all pro. <laughs> they're all feeling pro. And they're doing stuff. 
they're not doing a lot of stuff, but they're doing something. Unfortunately, our sub is not deep enough, so yeah, there goes our ammo. And there goes myself. Hmm. This doesn't look good, does it? It does not look good at all. Oh crap, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, poor little sub. He is surrounded with mines. He is being eaten alive right now with frag and mines. Perhaps I shouldn't have brought our submarine in on this one. I've got a feeling, you know, our flyers could have handled it by themselves. So this did cost us... This was quite expensive. That damage was quite expensive. And obviously there's still more damage to come, as you can see. So yeah, your thoughts and opinions on the whole should... Well, we can't really make it go any deeper here because we are in shallow water. But yeah, your comments and suggestions about, you know, having our submarine, you know, stay deep, no matter even if there are, you know, air targets. Oh, wow, beautiful. Yes, beautiful. So yeah, comments and suggestions on that, you know, should we keep our submarine deep, even if there is, um, air targets? Or not? What the hell is going on? Oh dear, he looks like one of our little flyers has gotten into trouble. Looks like your face, your face has been rearranged. The other one's okay. I have to keep remembering to get my finger off the whole weapons. Well, at least that was two hits in a row, so that wasn't that bad. Oh, that was nice as well. Very good. AI dead as well. Very good, very good. So yeah, this has cost us quite a bit on the resources, that is for sure. Boop. Right in the face. In the face! Beautiful. Hello. These little simple weapons, you know, they are pretty good. They are pretty damn good. If you're up against, you know, the water guard, I should say. I don't think I would use them versus the Onyx watch. <laughs> oh, no, don't you do it, you horrible. Why? 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 Do you, what? God damn you, you are not a land vehicle. Gee. Oh, well. Oh, well. And we'll bring everything that we can in, and everything that they can, hopefully. Now, alright, so we only have one flyer in, and... Ooh. We really started off on the shadow end, didn't we? You seem to be doing okay. Oh, god damn you, squirrel! <laughs> God, I hate you. Right. Now, I don't know if we should try to attempt to board and uh, take it to scrap it. Or just blow it up. To be honest, I just think, you know, I'm just going to blow it up. <laughs> I'm having one of those days. One of those lazy days that even uh, clicking a couple of buttons is just too much right now. <laughs> Hmm. 
Well, there goes that. And there goes the other one. Very nice. So we do have a couple of missiles though coming from that and that's probably going to hurt our little flyers. They're not that good at dodging missiles or probably detecting them. I'm not sure which one it is. Looks like our torpedoes are, you know, somewhat related to dolphins. Very nice, very nice. Very nice indeed. Who okay, so we're going to be going after these air targets over here. We have one coffin, nail, uh, gotha, and a flying squirrel. Alrighty, so. Hmm. I was hoping that would have hit. So we've knocked a couple of big things off the whole. My god, it has evaporated me. <laughs> a couple of hits and it's gone. Excellent. So now we have this pest. Horrible thing. <laughs> horrible, horrible thing. But it looks like, you know, our little uh, air, tar our little air um, flyers over there is sorting it out, hopefully. This guy spawned in the water. Um, don't do that. You are totally going to get wrecked now. That was... How did you manage to get hit anyway? My god, this squirrel is... It has lived too long. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You have lasted way too long, my friend. Go away. Excellent. So that does that. We have the Fankelheim that is left. Okay, so we are now up against one Fankel, Finkel, Finkelheim. So remember, if you have enjoyed what you have seen today, please remember to smash that like and subscribe button like they owe you money. I'm pretty sure I have gone way over my record time that I wanted to do. So I'm going to probably cut out a number of fights. Very looking forward for all of your suggestions on our soon-to-be flagship. And anything else, really, if you guys have any other suggestions on other stuff and things to, to do, please let me know. Oh wow, that was extremely and utterly easy. Perfect! Epic way to end! Please do not crash into each other, that is not going to be an epic way to end. That will be an epically horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible way to end. So I'm going to call it here, my awesome YouTubians. Remember to leave me all your good comments and suggestions and everything else, anything else that you can think of really that can help either improve you know what we have or for the future future constructs and even just the just the uploads themselves you know the quality and and stuff and things to be showing you all so for now i am gonna say uh, take care and i'll catch you all on the next one